Hi guys, so in this video I wanted to tell you how I edit my photos with Snapseed. Um, in particular I'll be talking about portraits and this one. Um, I use a slightly different method for product photography and flat lace etc. So without further ado let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is choose a photo that you want to edit in Snapseed. I'm gonna go for this one. What I do first usually is I tidy up any problem areas on my skin and I do it with this healing brush. What you can do with it is um, if you zoom in and I do it using two fingers and tap on a particular spot that you want to get removed it will do it. So it'll take kind of like a patch from um, nearby and just kind of like overwrite it. And sometimes it works better um, when you have like a big patch. So the further away zoomed out you are, the bigger the patch it is that you're going to take. So if you zoom in real close, then um, you can really go into detail. And I'll do it on the other side as well. The only problem that I have with this sometimes is that you don't really have much influence in what kind of patch it takes it kind of just goes the nearby one usually sort of like the on the left of where you're tapping or right to where you're tapping so and then maybe i'll move so if you want to move around the image you would use two fingers as well otherwise you end up smudging your face Okay, so once I'm happy with the result, I would click on the tick to confirm. And whenever I tap on the image, I can always see the before and after. And the next thing I would do, I will scroll down and click the portrait. And it has three options thing, of things you could do. So number one is face spotlight, so it literally just brightens your face. This photo in particular doesn't need it as much. Then the next one is skin smoothing, so it's normally automatically at plus 30. So you can go ultra smooth, but then it looks really fake, so I wouldn't go that far. I would probably stay below 30. And then the last one, um, so this by the way is just literally me going up and down. And the last one is eye clarity. I really like this feature, so it kind of like brightens and adds more contrast to the eye area so the if i go super extreme you see exactly what it does but again i wouldn't go too extreme maybe about 2023 20, so you can see how it adds this definition to the eyes it's pretty cool next i would go into selective tool i would usually add a little bit of highlights and contrast in certain areas so for example i would probably um, add one to the eye and by pinching the fingers together you will i will only restrict it to like this area of the iris and then you, you can choose between brightness saturation contrast etc so let's um amp the contrast amp the contrast a little bit and increase the saturation and the structure. So it gives even more definition to the eye. Don't forget to do it on the other side. So I would add another one here. It's very subtle to be honest, but it kind of all adds up. And then I would use the selective tool again. And I would probably just increase the brightness ever so slightly on the lips. Usually kind of like that in the middle gives them a bit more fullness. Sometimes what you can also do is some contouring of your face. So to do that, I would go into brush. So usually I would go plus five on the things where I want to add highlights. So for example, maybe a bit more on the nose and you can actually select the eye icon to see what I'm painting, um, like on the chin. Where you usually like would add highlights when you're doing your makeup, maybe even highlights on the cheekbones. So now you can see slightly, it's um, just a little bit illuminated. And then if you go, down to so minus five 
you could add just a little bit underneath the cheekbones, maybe side, maybe a bit on top and a bit underneath the chin. It just kind of adds a little bit of definition to your face. I don't usually do it, but sometimes when I feel like it, I do. So you can see the before and after already. It just looks a little bit more defined. Um, and I didn't change anything of the shape of the face, but it actually made a huge difference. The last feature that I use sometimes is the lens blur. With this photo, it won't show as much, but um, when you have a bit more background, it will show quite a lot. So um, if I take it to the extreme, you'll see what it does. So it re really, really blurs the edges um, and it gives the um, image sort of like a amazing depth of field. Um, because the focus is more like on your eyes and your face and the background is blurred out. So what I would do is I'd probably reduce the blur strength a little bit in this one. You can also increase the, um, the area which you want to get blurred. And the other thing you can do also, yeah, increase the transition so it's not as harsh. And then you can also add a bit of vignette so you darken the background. But I'll, um, I'll do just a little bit maybe around here. Maybe actually even less. I kind of prefer it to be quite light, the background. Cool. So this is the before and this is the after. And then I would click export, save as a copy. save successfully and now I would go into Tezza which is an app that I recently downloaded and I use it quite a lot. What I love about Tezza is the filters that they have. The one that I use the most is Vintage 3 um, and when I double click on it it will show me like a dial and I will put it right down to like 10 or 11 the filter strength otherwise it's just too bright and too contrasty but around like you know 11 12 14 that's sort of like a really cool um i don't know it just gives it like this vintagey look and um a little tint almost and i really like it it just puts brings all my photos together in the feed and makes them look quite nice saved and that's it this is how i edit my portraits